to me, humility in the, in the really the bare essence of it is is being as God created me. There couldn't be anything more humble than to say, "You're right, God. The the way you created me is the way that it is, mm. not the way that I've tried to make myself be." So I think where the confusion comes in with humbleness and humility is this: we've got this strange idea that's tied into the ego around false modesty. Uh, you know, somehow that if we if we don't not don't shine our light, but we keep our light covered under the bushel, that that's modest, and that that's humble. If we just kind of stay, you know, kind of off isolated and squirreled away and don't bother anybody, uh, don't don't have to talk much or whatever, that that's modest and humble. And and really what I see Jesus saying in the Course and then in, in the Urtext even where he's talks about listen and learn and do, that there's, there's a component of cleaning and clearing the mind of all these false concepts and idols. And then the whole point of that is to shine, to really shine our light, you know, to be a light unto the world and to really see that it's not outside of us. We're just shining and radiating the, the light of the oneness. So I think that's, for me, that was the thing where I had a lot of, of doubt around things, and, and I think I confused the modesty with the humbleness and humility, and therefore it wasn't working, uh, being modest. Um, you know, it was, there was level confusion in there, in terms of, of not really having true empathy. I, was, I see that false modesty is really tied in with uh, like a false sense of humility, and actually it's, a, it's an arrogance, even though it seems to put itself down, it really is still denying that I am as God created me. And in that sense, even that false sense of humility and, and false modesty is still arrogant, even though it doesn't seem to be so puffed up, it's still taking it to the other end, you know, and saying, oh, I'm low. Uh, and somehow that's supposed to be valuable, you know, <laughs> to be low and worthless, you know, you start to, <laughs> to look at it. So, and it's the same thing that happened to me around, uh, around peace and freedom and intimacy. I remember having this talk with Jesus one time and, and talking about how important that intimacy and freedom and peace were. And he said, yeah, you have every right to pray for these experiences because they're part of your natural birthright in the Kingdom of Heaven. He just said, you've just been going about them in egoic uh, and really distorted ways. Like you, he just told me, your ideas of intimacy, David, are so wrapped up in the body you know, you just, in terms of sex and affection and all this stuff, you, you have so many associations in the mind that are related to intimacy in the body, that that's why you're so disappointed. You have every right to intimacy, but it's inside you. It's inside your mind. It's, it's in your purpose. It's not going to be found in these strange associations that you keep playing out over and over and over. And it's the same with freedom. You know, I grew up and I was thinking, you know, I want to be free. I, I want to live in a free country. I want to have freedom of mobility. I want, I want upward mobility. I want freedom in terms of financial freedom. I had all these concepts in my mind. And Jesus said again, you have every right to freedom. But you're going about it in a very strange way. Uh, you know, first, freedom of mobility, you know. And financial freedom, it was like, I was telling Jesus, I don't like being stuck in Cincinnati. You know, this isn't like WKRP in Cincinnati and listening to Johnny Fever. It's no fun living in such a conservative, uh, with a muddy river. Uh, you know, I'm not happy uh, being stuck to Cincinnati. I can't wait to get away. And he's like, well, you know, it's... That's not really your problem, you know, it's, you're going to find that if you feel this stuckness, 
based on these things in form, you're going to feel stuck a lot of places in this world. You're going to feel stuck in the world. And, you know, like a fly in glue, you're just, you're not going to get out of it that way. But again, he said, if you follow me, and you do as I instruct you, I will take you inward to that freedom that you want. But you won't find it in the mobility of the body. You won't find it in financial freedom and and being able to say and do whatever you want. You know, who is the I that wants to say and do all these things and thinks that it's so constrained? You know, who is that I? And so, and it was the same with love, you know. You, you have all these ideals of romantic love and and how, wow, if I could just have that in my life, I could, wow, I would really soar if I had love and, and love that looks this way. And, you know, it's just another pursuit. And Jesus says, seek not outside yourself, for it will fail, and you will weep each time an idol falls. How many of us can relate to that in terms of relationships? How many, how many of these idols do we have to keep trying, you know? Keep plugging it in. Oh, it's going to work this time. <laughs> I know it. This one. This is. We're talking soulmate, Jesus. You watch, Jesus. I've got the soulmate this time, and you watch. I've been at it all these years, but I, you watch. I'm going to show you. And you know. And then you got the soulmate thing going for a couple of weeks. I'm grooving now. I got it going. And then it goes for a couple of months. Yeah, I told you so. I told you so. And then you get into it for maybe a year, year and a half, and you wake up one morning, and you turn across at the pillow, and it's like, you believe what? It's like, there we go, you know. No two people see the same world. It's the personality, it's the yeah, persona no that no two, no two people have ever met, right? <laughs> much less communed. Uh, so then, you know, again, it's this humble, that, that's when you eat humble pie. Uh, again, you know, when you, I mean, it's pretty humbling when you get into the, the teacher's manual and Jesus is talking about those three levels of relationships. Yeah. And when he gets to the third one, and he starts off with, you know, it's very rare. And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Rare. <laughs> I, got the rare, I got the rare thing going on. Okay. And then you go a little bit further and it says, uh, life, lifelong partner. And you're like, yeah, that's it. Rare, lifelong partner. I've hit pay dirt now. This is, it. this is it. And then he says, they may be hostile to one another. Perhaps for life. <laughs> oh, no! The whole soulmate plan is... <laughs> taking a nose down. Because you, know, you start to see, oh my God, what is he talking about? Hostile to each other, perhaps for life. What is he talking about? How can he say these words? This must be mischanneled. You know, something strange here. But that's, you know, it, it does, it's a very humbling journey because it's like, Every time you keep at this, it's like the floor drops out. Like, I think you, you finally think you've got a point where you feel a bit stabilized, you know, and you're like, okay, all right, okay. And then, you know, just when you kind of are settled there, then it's like the floor drops out, and you find yourself dropping again, kind of like grasping for something, or, or wondering, where did all that stability go that was just there? Did I take a wrong turn? And you really, you haven't taking a wrong turn at all. It's just the floor is going to keep <laughs> dropping and dropping and dropping until until you're in a free fall. And then until you're just in, in a free, you know, in a free state. And the fall is it's gone. You get into the rabbit hole and then you just get into a free fall and then finally you just relax into that. And that's what it's all about.